Olympics advance for game number one. KT Rolster yep. versus Samsung Galaxy. There's Italy the Nilly Lissandra. No surprises so far. Yep. Lee Sin actually taken out. Oh, Eve is a really good mechanical Lee Sin player. I am surprised to see the Ezreal ban. I don't feel that KT has been doing that great with double AD compositions. In fact, they really don't hit their power spikes with those or push properly. So I, I don't think that's that much of a threat. Although Nagne's individual Ezreal positioning in team fights has been solid. I mean, if Samsung just feels they're not very strong against that strategy in general, you know, I suppose you could just ban that out. And Kalista, okay. Well, we've seen a lot of Kalista bans lately. LeBlanc. Right, LeBlanc. Okay. So right. Rek'Sai is available. So is Rumble. Yeah, so is Rumble. Yeah. But they're probably going to take the Rek'Sai and then move on from there. And that is what they will do, considering that they spent two bands on... Ooh, wow. So considering they spent two bands on Eve's champion pool, you're not just going to go ahead and give him Rek'Sai after I, that. That would be a huge waste. I was going to say, they just picked a blind Zareth into Nagne. Like, Ari, Zed, take your pick, Nagne. You're really good at both of them. Good luck, yeah. Gase. That's a that bit questionable. Yeah. Could take the Diana too. Hard matchup early, but you do get a lot of all-in pressure later on. I have not seen Dogne playing that much Diana in solo queue recently. Well, I think grabbing the Thresh now for Fixer is a good idea as well, too. You don't want that taken away, which it, it probably would be, I think, on the next rotation, you'd imagine. And we, like we said, you know, Fixer has frankly struggled on champions that are not named Thresh. I feel that this is really playing into Samsung's strength, though. Uh, their formula for winning has been poke, pokey champions uh, in the mid lane, a tank top lane, and giving Fury Graves. Yeah. So by choose, by not banning the Xerath, it's a bit bit iffy. But looks like oh, the Diana okay. will be locked in. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, Nagne, a well-known Aryan Zed player, but uh, Diana, it fits okay. And after IEM, it seems like people are much, much more willing to give it a try here in Korea. Well, it's he did make his name initially on some of these melee mages like yeah. Gragas, so I guess I'm not too surprised. That was a long time ago, though. That yeah, was... but he does well when he can really get into the fight. The Lissandra, while not a melee mage, is the same way. You really go in mm -hmm. uh, on that champion. And so that, I think, may now, suit him. Do you think... You go with the Morgana here to try to lock people up when they come in, or do you just go for the disengage straight up with Janna? What's what's your what's a better pick? In your I think opinion? I think Samsung will go with the Janna. That has been by far their biggest support pick this season, yeah. and you really want the disengage right now. You see the Rexai, you see the the Diana coming in, so I would not be surprised at all for them to grab that. Samsung is really really transparent in drafts. Tank top, mage mid, <laughs> Janna, and then. Yeah, that's that's it. And then it's Eve, team finder all over again. So, we'll right. see what Eve ends up taking as his jungle pickup. Though obviously, Jarvan is perfectly acceptable here. Hmm. Could could go for could go for Nunu Ooh, actually Agma as well. Lulu for KT. So they're gonna try a little bit of uh, protect the cog, a little bit of juggermaw. Perhaps. Yeah, they're they're, yep. they're juggermawing. So that's. Yep. Uh, mm, eh. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that confident because Arrow is not a, has not been a strong laner, and even though he's going to have that range advantage on Sivir early, you really need to make sure you get farmed as Cogma because your team is dependent on you. Well, yeah, more than anything, his CSing has been, you know, some of the worst in the league. So also, someday's top Lulu has not been, not been great. Yeah, it's not been great. So I'm a little bit worried about that. All right, Jarvan, the possible pickup for Eve would certainly fit his style. Taking a look, actually, at Nagne's stats, he has never played a professional game on Diana, so that's very interesting. Really? I would have thought he had to have yeah. back in, like, season three or something. Yeah, he's like been around that. for yeah. a long time since... Well, he kind of he kind of made a name for himself after the Diana wave was over in season oh, that's three. that's true. We've only recently seen her start coming back. But I mean, I think Diana is a great pick with a Juggernaut composition. She's definitely a huge damage threat and can absorb a lot and can really get into the back line to disrupt Zareth. So KT, I really like their draft. This is, I feel it's another game where I'm like, wow, KT, I think your draft is very good. As always, they tend to do yeah. very well in drafts all season long. Yeah, the only, the teams. yeah, for the most part, like 90% of the games, I feel like, wow, KT really had a good draft. Uh, they, they, 
they did have a bit of a hiccup in game three against CJ where I didn't like their Leona pick. I didn't think it made sense. But this team comp, I think, is quite good. You could may maybe make an argument for swapping out Nami instead of Thresh, but Thresh still has enough disengage, and he can make more plays. Yeah. So I think I like it. it's it's absolutely acceptable. And considering that we know Fixer is does enjoy playing some more of these crowd control uh, pick making supports like Leona and Thresh, it may just suit better with his style as well. Yeah, we'll see. A lot of questions about Arrow's Kogma as well. He's 0-2 on the champion this season, so will he get his first win? KT, I KT has tried dogs. to run Juggermaw before. <laughs> it yeah. has not been successful. They yeah. have gotten flanked. Uh, the old Wild Growth has had, had to go on different targets, and I haven't really been impressed. Well, we'll see who takes it. KT versus Samsung. Let's get in the game. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster versus Samsung. Big cheers for Samsung. You know, the funny thing is when we had our, our team intro thing, there weren't really any cheers for CJ or GE. Those fans probably aren't at the studio yet, though. Uh, Usually or, people kind of roll in a different wave. Or maybe they just are, you know, showing their own <laughs> fan shame, right? We'll see yeah. in a little bit. All right, well, I'm very curious as to what we're going to see right here. Eve, ooh, cute, cute little play with Fog of War. Eve is going to drop the standard in, and they will see Arrow, and they will get that ward oh, also. Nice. That's very nice for them. That's very helpful. Deep ward in, so they'll know if KT and Fixer are going after oh. the Krugs, because blue side Rek'Sai, the reason why they're doing this is we've seen, especially Najin, when they pick Rek'Sai on blue side, just go ahead and donate tank the Krugs and donate both Krugs to the bottom lane to get them a large advantage in terms of the 2v2. Yeah. And in this matchup where Kog'Maw can harass you with his Bioarcane Barrage from a long way away early on, that's pretty valuable. Uh, so they're just trying to get the information to know if they're doing that or not so they have an opportunity to disrupt it or perhaps uh, take something on their side of the map also. It's, it's very strong with Rek'Sai, and the reason why Rek'Sai can give that up is because her sustain is so good that it doesn't really matter if she takes a little Krug damage. She can just go to red and hit two off of that instead. Yep. Not to mention when you burrow, you get some health back from that Fury, so. Okay, T. Pretty easy stuff. Oh, they're skipping it. Okay. Yeah, they're just going to go help at red buff right now, so nobody yeah. actually going to get XP before they go into lane. And we also... Uh, don't see any Maokai tricks this game. So there was actually a lot that could have been going on with level at level one just because of these team compositions. Uh, the Rek'Sai and the Maokai do open up a lot of stuff you can do before the, really, game starts in earnest. Yeah, well, uh, for example, we saw Shy, well, he was on blue side, but, you know, take Wolves with Maokai back, pick up a Mana Pot, and then run to lane, or teleport to lane, rather. Yeah, or you can... Donate the small raptors over to your mid laner. Right. It's a lot of tricks. Lots yep. of tricks. Yep, Maokai tricks. Tricks with trees. <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to become the next Dr. Seuss, Doa. I, I detest rhyming, though. I only do it for ironic purposes. You rhyme all the time on casts. Not, not intentionally, though. I can't help that my flow is so good. <laughs> and then you keep on rhyming. What do you mean not intentionally? That's the biggest <laughs> lie of all time. <laughs> I just start to flow, and I can't stop. You know? Wow, you should be a rapper. In a, you know, in a past life. I, listened, I did listen to a lot of crisscross. In a, in a past life? How old are you? <laughs> well, it feels like a past life. <laughs> you know, I turn 32 tomorrow. Monte Cristo. I know. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well, it's not my birthday yet, but... Happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scorch just apparently wanted to get a good look at Cuvé as he recalls. Get a tunnel in as well. Uh, yep. Just one more thing you can do to be annoying. Try and set up some opportunities early on. Nagne getting poked out a little bit right here, as expected. Yeah, CSing pretty well, though, all things considered. 
he's got a flask, so he's doing all right. Yeah. Good old Crescent Strike. Gets you a lot of minions. Well, not too much exciting going on yet. No, not really. Some good zoning going on from Arrow and Fixer, though, in this bottom lane. Well, you know, honestly, they, they looked good in lane yeah. versus CJ early on. It's it's just kind of later when things started to fall apart a little bit. So this appears to be kind of more of the same we saw earlier in the week. Yeah, it's a good matchup, though, as well. Yeah. The Kog'Maw can cause a lot of problems for some of these shorter range AD carries early on in the game. Yep. And, of course, that Thresh constantly having to worry about the hooks coming in. So. Yeah, it looks like score is sticking around that side of the map as well, too, just making sure. Oh, Eve, though, he's up on top. They're going after Someday. Are they going to be able to get him? Someday, that's the wrong way, man. You're basically the other direction. Nice flash out of the QE combo, and it looks like he'll be able to make it out. Wow, like meanwhile, Rage. Hurt. Yeah, it gets very, very low in that bot lane. Nice moves for Someday, though. Score makes an appearance in mid, gets hit a few times by Ace. Yeah, that's fine. He just needs to add some pressure so that Nogne could farm out that wave and yeah. make sure he stays even. That should be the goal for KT in the mid lane. So, you're getting a little bit of time to see us. He's, you know, understandably down a few just from being pushed into turrets so aggressively by Arrow. Samson's going to have a really hard time if KT gets into the late game here because they have sufficient peel in order to stay relatively safe as long as they can get through lane and through the mid game. But they're also going to have superior poke actually later on, especially with Lulu and Kog'Maw together. They, oh, Ooh, that was close. Missed, but he still knows he's there from the Tremor Sense. Now, yeah, getting into the late game right here, Samsung does have a decent amount of, of engage with the Sivir, Jarvan, and Maokai, but I think KT should be able to kite this out. It'll be interesting to see if Fixer goes for a Talisman or something like that for better kiting purposes. Uh, it's, I, I really like the composition that KT has, especially the Diana into that Xerath and the Sivir. Diana gets into the back lines. There's really not a whole lot they can do. She's going to stand there and auto attack with her passive, dealing a huge amount of damage. I think a lot of it, though, is going to come down to Arrow's positioning in team fights. You know, is he going to be able to be that safe Kogma that we've seen, or you know, kind of, kind of running on the edge a little bit with this composition, counting on the whimsy and the shields to keep you a bit safer than he normally would be. You know, for a long time, Prey was the only one who was able to do it, and even the people that have won games with the uh, Juggermaw haven't looked as clean as Prey did. Yeah, that, see, uh, GE definitely the best team at running that. I mean, we've seen some play in China with it also, but it's it's really a very difficult comp to run. I do think that it is one of, if not the most powerful composition in the current in the game currently, but it's also one of the most difficult to use properly yeah. because it is very unforgiving in terms of mistakes. Also, if Kog'Ma dies in the laning phase, you can have a lot of problems. And that's also why I like the Juggermaw composition better when you have Lulu top lane instead of mid lane, because it adds an extra damage source. When you have a mid lane Lulu with it and like a top tank or something like that, you simply are too reliant on Kog'Maw because if he dies in lane or if he gets behind it all, you just suddenly have no damage. And if you have like a LeBlanc or uh, this Diana in mid, at least there's another damage threat on the team. And there's also greater pick potential as well with an assassin. So True. I, I generally prefer to see that version of it. I don't think Lulu mid is, is very good, specifically with this comp. You know, I mean, the interesting thing is that wild growth is something that you generally only use on Kog'Maw in emergencies in this comp. You know, you really hope you're not going to need it, but you can use it very offensively on Diana and Rek'Sai as well, too, so. Yeah, that's a really special case, though, because you'd have to be 100% sure that Kog'Maw is safe in order to use Wild Growth on oh, an yeah. Engage, because right. generally you're not going to be engaging with this composition at all. It's mostly just turning around your opponent's Engage and punishing them with the knockup. So we'll see how it goes this game. The Wild Growth, is, the wild growth usage is very key to what goes on. Uh, in this composition, and we've seen teams fail with it because in the engagement they don't use the wild growth on Kogma, and then the team just turns on Kogma and kills it. Yeah. So, really difficult to use it more offensively in a 5v5. If you're skirmishing elsewhere on the map, it can be very good.
Well, the worst is when you have to self-cast it as Lulu. Then, then things are really, yeah. then things have gotten really bad. Yeah. yeah, definitely better just to let Lulu die and put it on somebody else. Yep. Someday is uh, one and two so far in the season with Lulu. And that one win, I really doubt, had a Kog'Maw in it. They, they have not been, they have not been good when they have attempted to use this composition. But yeah. er, this time, Arrow's Lightning Phase is going really, really well. Sheen first for some more punishment. Yeah, much higher CS than uh, Fury, too. You know, and at this point, you, you begin to wonder, because even though Arrow's first w week with Fixer wasn't great, uh, the, this week, he's been doing way better in lane than he has before. And yeah, part of it is the preferential matchups, but he's built a really nice CS advantage right now. And so... They started to develop that synergy, and they're looking better. Kuve does get whimsied. whimsied. Yep, trying to come in. He's going to flash when he comes right out of it. Pops yeah. that ultimate just to stay safe. Nagne tried to go for a bit of a roam, but no opportunities there. Yeah, score shouldn't have popped the chilling spider. Mm -hmm. Virtually no chance of actually completing that kill. Yeah. But even so, does get a flash for his troubles at the very least. It certainly seems worth it. Raxile, ooh, he's going down the bot. Gonna go after those Krugs and we'll see. No, he bypassed the Krugs. And so far, nobody's really warding around Dragon. It's been a very lane-centric early game so far. Yeah, there haven't been a lot of opportunities to take it yet, uh, especially for Samsung because they've been pushed in the bottom lane for the most part and taking a lot of harassment. So this is not good for Samsung. KT there actually go. just gonna abuse the timing right now. Yep. And well, there's no vision at all there for Samsung. Yeah, this is. They probably have an idea, but this is really bad for Samsung. They they push the wave forward, but KT isn't going to lose hardly any minions at the bottom side as a result of this. And so the recall, pretty much a free dragon and not even really a lot of gold. Uh, looks like about three minions only lost in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Really good for KT. So they're well on their way. I mean, this is. Exactly. It couldn't be going better for them, really, right now, unless they picked up a few kills. But under standard, not wacky conditions, this is a very strong start for this composition. And Samsung, they are burdened to make plays right now. Eve has to find a way to get some of these players ahead, mostly mid and bottom. And if you can't, um, they will not kill Kogma. And they're not going to be able to outpoke Kogma either, so it's very problematic. They, they just don't have the same level of shields, considering that Janna won't be building a lot of AP that Lulu's going to have, so Kog'Maw will just be able to walk forward and chunk the hell out of people with T-Force. Yeah, pretty much. Nogne has done a really good job in this mid lane. I mean, now that he has a Vistal Scepter, it certainly helps quite a bit. Oh, yeah. You know, he's basically even in CS, only about five down at the moment. Yeah, Kuve too, with double Doran's ring and catalyst, there's really not a lot that someday can do with him just because every time he hits that level, he's going to get so many stats back. Yeah, oh boy, they're gonna try to go in. There's Wad Grove to knock up on Kuve. Kuve, remember, no flash. He's getting very, very low. And that is first blood going to score. And KT Rolster Nagne taking the opportunity to maybe make something happen here. Just killing that pink ward instead. Really bad trade from Kuve. He had no wards around there, and he chose to get into a scrap and use his W early on and really commit to an extended trade. And even though he was doing well against this Lulu, thanks to his itemization, uh, that could have cost him first blood and the tower right there. So yeah. pretty big misplay without the flash. Suddenly it's like a two and a half K gold lead now for KT just out of nowhere at 12 minutes. And now it's all on Samsung to try to make up the difference, and that's not going to help. Fury gets grabbed, gets put in the box, pops that spell shield, exhausts on the arrow, but Fury's still taking a lot of damage. Teleport's coming in. Kuve trying to lock up Fixer a little bit. The heal from Wraith is not enough, and Kuve on his own trying to make it back to the turret. Here comes Score, another nice, nice death sentence from Fixer. Someday getting a bit low, but that's a double kill now for Arrow, and KT just continues to kind of roll through Samsung Galaxy at this point. That was a pretty convincing teleport play right there. And the play onto Wraith as well. Uh, I like how they grabbed Fury. Fury should have spell shielded that first hook. And then when he used it, Fixer did a very good job of holding his play yeah. up until the end. So he had it off a of cooldown for when Kuve came in. That was actually very nicely played by Fixer. Well, Fixer is a really good thrush player. We've seen that. It's just the problem has been when he's played something else. All right, well, here's another game like we saw from KT versus CJ in game one, where KT has picked up some lane kills and some really nice CS advantages. Yeah. But they fell apart when they tried to transition into actually pushing objectives. 
in that game. Uh, so they need to be reserved, but they also need to start putting on pressure with this Kog'Maw and start sieging up. He's got that Trinity Force. They took down the bottom tower and the top tower. They need to move Kog'Maw into the mid lane. Diana can split push right now. Well, um, the nice thing for them, too, is they've already kind of moved through the danger zone that they got caught in against CJ, where they made that really ill-advised tower dive, gave Ambition a triple kill. That was kind of the... the turning point in that game where things started getting a little bit worse for KT as going on. But with uh, both turrets down there, maybe yep. they've avoided it. And here's what they what they should be doing right now. Dragon is down, so you move Nogne's Diana into the top side because she has the Abyssal. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Nogne. Here we go, score. A lot of damage on the Fury here. In trouble again. And nothing Wraith and Ace can do. So the Fury's positioning was a, a bit off right there. Yeah, I mean, he had some decent ward coverage, so he thought he may be safe, but guess, unfortunately yeah. he got caught in a collapse. But right now, what KT should be doing is with Dragon, since that Dragon was down, or maybe Ooh. after the next Dragon, we'll see how they chose to play. Oh, a dive! Oh, they're just diving, and Eve gets very low. A nice double knockup from score. Wraith and Ace go down. Eve makes it out. That's a little bit better of a dive, but the difference there is that the ill-fated dive against CJ, Arrow wasn't around. That time, the entire team was there, so... It's much easier to just blow people up, and they're going to march right to the Tier 2 turret as well. Score zoning a bit in the back, and that turret getting very, very low. Last minion goes down, and they'll get that turret. So, wow, a dive, really two kills, push. two turrets. Yeah, KT looking very, very tight in this game. Now, the question is, are they going to recall and maybe give up some of these pink wards before they actually contest this dragon? Looks like they will. They got a bunch of money, so they can afford to buy some new ones if they are swept out. But what KT needs to do to close this game, now I can finally talk about it, Doha. All right, do it. Is once the dragon is down, you can move Nogne into the top side. Oh, God, I can't talk about <laughs> it. All Tell right. us about this fight instead. Yeah, Nogne getting into the back line right there. And it's pretty easy tower dive, actually, considering there are five members there and the wild growth is still available. Someday didn't even have to use it in that fight, just holding yeah. on to it in case they needed to use it defensively. Really nicely played. Uh, knowing score would get the knockup right there, and they are so strong. So it should be an easy dragon. And then in that situation, you could book Nogne split pushing in the top lane. Although the the parameters have changed a little bit, because you don't want Kog'Ma overextending. So before, if they hadn't gotten those two towers, Nogne goes top, uh, someday goes bot, and then you either or you 4-1, but probably just 1-3-1 at that point. Uh, until Dragon comes up. Now what they need to do is just start grouping and sieging Tier 2s. Yeah. So get the Dragon, then probably all could just walk into the bottom side and start using this shielded, sped up Kog'Ma with the Trinity Force to really force the issue. To force the issue? To Trinity Force Trinity the issue. Force the issue. I see what you did there. Uh, that's another Dragon, and uh, doesn't look like there's anything Samsung can do about it. And so, second Dragon for KT, and it's a, it's a shutout at this point for KT. No kills, no deaths on the side of Samsung. No, or well, lots of deaths, but no kills, no towers on the side of Samsung. KT looking much more decisive in this game than we've seen them when running comps that weren't that all-in composition. And that was their problem, was the indecision in some of their team fighting around yeah. poke compositions. Uh, they really don't want Kog'Maw mid right now. This is not, he's not doing anything right there. He's not gonna get an inhibitor turret right now. They have the bottom side warded. They should just, they should four or five man bottom. This is not good. Well, he's going up to top. Let's see what happens. Out of all the games that would get our first perfect game of the season, I really doubt that it'd be KT. There's probably a lot of game left. I really don't like what KT is doing right now. Well, I mean, generally bottom tower is a priority, right? Because Baron is towards the top of the map. You want to go the uh, farthest away from Baron you can to draw the pressure. That turret gets very, very low. Yeah, that was mostly because Samsung didn't respond very quickly to that tower. Um, but there's still wall to wave clear there now, and it's a 3v3. And if Sivir gets up there, they can really all in this Kog'Ma unless there are five members from KT. So they have to back off and let Diana split push instead. Well, yeah, Samsung really hasn't had a chance to use that Fury ultimate, use Sivir's ultimate to have a big engage. And if they can, you're right. Arrow's in a little bit of trouble. But for now, there goes another turret. Five to zero right now. Not sure why Zareth actually left that lane right there because Ace is just sort of standing in mid at the moment. It's a really odd defense from Samsung this game. So it, actually, it's making it quite easy for KT to knock down turrets. Yeah. 
I mean, Samsung too. They, we, you could never really say they're a team this season that plays well from behind. They kind of are forced to get a lead early on and then kind of capitalize on that. That's the only chance they've really had in winning anything. And so at this point in the game, it's traditionally you really don't expect them to come back, especially 19 minutes in being, you know, 8,000 gold down. I, I really doubt that Samsung's going to have a chance to come back in this one. No, not especially against KT's composition. KT would have to make some tremendous blunders in order to lose this game at this point because right. they're all powered up. Juggermaw's rolling, and once it, that gets rolling, it is really the strongest probably thinking League of Legends right now. Well, it helped, too, that they were able to get three of the five kills, or three of the six kills, rather, onto Arrow. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice boost there. <laughs> it's a really, really bad situation for Samsung. It doesn't get much worse than this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good patience from Arrow, just waiting for Fixer to catch up and go ahead and sweep out any wards before he starts going after this red. Yeah, he'll get it. No problem. And score is still maintaining a very high contribution to kill. It's it's a low kill game, but he's still five out of six. It's not yeah. bad. As we've come to expect from him, really. Right. You know, it is, I, for a long time, we talked about KT and we said, where are the playmakers? You know, where are the playmakers? Now, finally, it seems like Nagne is stepping up. You know, just in this week alone, it seems like Arrow, at least mechanically, seems to be stepping up yeah. a little bit. So it seems like KT, it's too late for them this season but they're starting to get on track for what could maybe be something nice next season. I agree with you. And also, Someday's Rumble has, in general, been pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. It certainly has. Although it wasn't banned, and we didn't see it picked by either side of this game, which is kind of interesting. It's, I, of I think it's good for KT that they're trying out compositions that they haven't traditionally been as successful with. Well, yeah, at this and point in the season, you have nothing to lose, right? They have nothing to lose, and it gives them a lot better practice as a team than going for the stuff they know they can take games off of top teams with. This is something that they really haven't done well this season, and they're performing nicely on it this game, although yeah. it's not like they have the strongest opponent. That is, That's, that is true. In fact, it's the absolute weakest opponent. But hey, they'll take it. It's kind of like, you know, if you want to practice your mechanics, you load up a bot game. No, I'm just, that's way too mean to Samsung. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I actually am really excited to see what Samsung can do later on in the year. I, I feel like, you know, E-Fury and Wraith are looking really good. Ace, he's playing Xerath game. We still, we, we still don't see anything really new from him, so I'm not so sure. Uh, my feeling that I had before the game started is, is diminished a bit by his uh, picking of Xerath. Kuve, I think, kind of needs to be replaced, honestly. But aside from that, Samsung has a, they've got the core, you know? They've got a structure to build on. A foundation to build a structure on. Real. I've been playing a lot of City Skyline. <laughs> I'm thinking building an architecture right now. Really? City building, yeah. What Hopefully, kind of city would Samsung be? Probably like my uh, my starter city <laughs> where the, the roads don't really make sense. And, <laughs> you know, you've got like the the water intakes directly downstream for where the sewage comes out. It's wow. uh, a <laughs> It's not not the greatest right now, but so but the you're basic you're basically implying that Samsung consumes their own excrement. But I'm saying <laughs> that you start by consuming your own excrement, and then <laughs> then you demolish all the industrial, you move the water intakes to a different peninsula, you you know install some purifiers, right? You redo the plumbing, so to speak, and then you know you build a couple of hospitals, and your citizens start to get healthy again. Yeah. I mean, All right. Well, good luck to Samsung over the rest of the season executing right. on your fantastic analogy. Let me finish <laughs> that sentence for you. I think that's what you were going to say. Wonderful plan. That's a wonderful right. building that's plan. Well, at least you have, at least you have a future in city planning. And see, life is if like this, a the whole casting thing goes south for you. That's right. Doatropolis. I'll build it. If I build it, maybe no, no, probably not. Another dragon for KT. It's going to be their third, and again. KT's, they've got to feel, frankly, pretty lonely when they take these dragons. They're like, isn't there supposed to be a team that shows up? There's not been really a team fight yet in this game. No, oh, there was one scrap in the bottom lane. Yeah, there was with like some teleports small and then skirmishes. KT has just been pushing objectives, and yep. they're doing really, really well. Sh shockingly, yes, they're doing really, really well at, at maintaining this methodical they just, play. They should just bait the Baron right now and stop trying to split push with Lulu because that's whatever, and they already have the deep boards in. They can absolutely can destroy Baron extremely quickly with this new fancy Blade of the Ruined King that Arrow has. 
do the Baron. Is it time? Oh, maybe. Score did jet over there. Or Burrow over there, I guess. Not really jet. And Nagne still split pushing. And he may be able this to just take this turret, jeez. It's a really weak Baron bait. They need Diana to stand there to take the Baron, so. Well, if you see their mid laner and bot pushing, you're like, oh, so they're not doing Baron. Nagne, Nagne, don't ruin the perfect game, Nagne. Nagne gets slowed by the W, goes back onto Fury, gets exhausted. Here comes Eve in a little bit of trouble, and the ult comes in. There's the Zonia's and Ace. He's not going to get it with his ult, but Fury's going to get it with an auto, and thanks, GG Nagne, perfect game ruined. <laughs> On the plus side, he got his team a Baron. I do think I there guess. was an easier way to get his team a Baron, which was stand next to them and bait the pit. Go to but... Baron and get it? Hey, it works, right? This is one of those times where you play Diana, and you're like, wow, Diana's a great split pusher. I should split push with her. But in this composition, at this time, that's not what you want to be doing. No. It's not, it's not what you want to be doing. Just you go don't for just the. You want to do it all the time. Just go for the Baron. Go take the Baron. Wait, stand in a brush. Wait for them to face check it. Auto them a million times with Kogma. He, Obviously, it's not the end of the world, though, but I demand perfection. He thought he was and we were so close to the perfect game. I know. He thought he was playing Trindamir, though. <laughs> we'll give him that. I'm pretty sure he just thought he was Trindamir. He thought he could, like, you know, pop his ultimate and not get killed. He thought he was supposed to be doing nothing but split pushing all game no matter what. It happens, you know? Also, I present an alternative, Doa, which is yeah. if you want to split push like that, split push with Rek'Sai. Yeah, that's not bad either. Have your team start the Baron and then Rek'Sai void rushes in to smite it. Oh boy. Idea. Well, Fixer, this game turned to look less perfect. Eve uh, getting very, very low. KT turning this one around, though. A little bit of damage coming in from Eve, but that is about it. Meanwhile, Kube getting bursted, getting slowly ground down, rather, instead. There we go, a lot of damage coming in, and nothing is really stopping KT at this point. They lost Eve so quickly. Arrow decides he wants to take a turn for a little bit, but they're going to turn around with this Baron buff. That is going to be an inhibitor turret, and now the chase is on. Nagne trying to get in onto Fury. Can't quite get him. There goes the inhibitor. The scary thing is that KT almost lost that team fight I despite know, right? their 15,000 gold lead. They need to group right now. And by getting caught out and a late teleport from someday, had Samsung been on even footing, Arrow would have died right there. So this is actually pretty sloppy execution from KT. In spite of having a very clean early game, now they're dropping the ball a little bit strategically. So see right here. You know they have this all in composition with the Sivir, so screw. Screw. That's all you have to do. Someday, misses his Glitter Lance. <laughs> and Q then Kuve actually lives as a result of the Miss Glitter Lance. These things happen. Yeah. Well, KT, they, they played so well up to this point, but. You know, traditionally they have always faltered a little bit in this part of the game, and I think this is probably one of the most solid games we've seen them play all season, all things considered. Yeah, their early game and their laning phase is improving, that's true, but I think up against a better team, uh, which we saw with CJ, KT, they just can't afford to make these kind of mistakes, especially with a delicate composition like this one, because if you don't have a 15 gold lead and you play like this with Juggernaut, you will lose. Yeah. Well, uh, someday just nearly got blown up there. In fact, Ace could have potentially tried to finish him off with the ultimate, but he didn't do it. Someday does not have a teleport. It's a long walk back. So this is a 4v5 siege right now for Samsung. Nagne in the base, though. And here we go. Sivir ultimate pop. They jump right onto it. Wow, they just jumped right onto Arrow. Fixer caught in the Cataclysm, uses the box to try to get away. What is KT doing? Uh, Lulu KT wasn't is... even there during that siege. You need Lulu have. to get the speed boost so that you can dodge in and out and actually auto the turrets. Yep. So they, KT uh, is doing a, an absolutely awful job of closing this game with his composition. Well, they tried to run Juggermaw without the, the Lulu right there. That's, I mean, you uh, might as well just yeah. play Kog'Maw without a Lulu at this point because there's no difference. It's pretty bad. And so, despite the fact they are still 13,000 gold down. Samsung has managed to repel KT from their base for now. 
I mean, to Samsung's credit, they are taking the right fights. They should absolutely all in on that every single time that oh, yeah. they have this this Kogma alone. There's they're, no protection. Yeah, there's no protection. They're playing it. They're playing it 100% correctly. So, good on Samsung for making plays when KT is not grouped up. They're actually holding a lot longer than I thought they'd be able to. Well, then they should have been able to, you know. Yeah, it's more, I feel it's more KT than Samsung. KT's yes, like, well, I agree with you. They'll get their fourth dragon. And Samsung coming down, but not a lot they can do. Unless they catch Arrow again. Well, they're all going to recall now. Maybe they will start putting pressure as a unit onto the bottom side. Arrow is starting uh, to push that minion wave forward, so it's a good start. Meanwhile, Someday is wandering off with his TP on cooldown up into the top side. Well, he is split pushing Lulu this game, man. <laughs> if, well, he doesn't need a least, Lich Bane either, apparently. No, he's getting it. At least, if he's split pushing Lulu, he actually is buying a Lich Bane now. Yeah, so. that is true. You sure it's not for Frozen Gauntlet? <laughs> <laughs> just, just wondering, you know. Just uh, picking that analytical brain of yours. <laughs> it's uh, a sheen. I, I hope it is, though. I hope it is. <laughs> definitely. Definitely going for Frozen Gauntlet. Iceborne Gauntlet? Iceborne Gauntlet. Iceborne Gauntlet. Yes. Right. Frozen Fist, Iceborne Gauntlet. Whatever you like to call it. Yeah. Was it originally Frozen Fist? I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was maybe in, like on the PBE, but when it actually came out, it was called Iceborne Gauntlet. Blue Glove of Anger. Blue gov Glove of Slowing. Yep. Well, KT just kind of taking whatever they want from the jungle of Samsung. Yep. 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 Stubbornly yep, refusing yep. to close this game. <laughs> there is no fantasy LCS in Korea. We don't need your points, KT. <laughs> Let's not make this a ULL Fanatic situation. Although, way too few kills for that, unfortunately. Wow, Lulu's here this time. Hey, Sweet. That makes the Kogma a whole lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> He's moving so fast and looks so safe. All right, Diana's still split pushing, though, so there is maybe a slight opportunity for an all-in. The, the inhibitor has come back up now. Wow. They had such a long time to safely push this. There's a bug yeah. minion right there. He's okay. Don't worry about him. Inhibitor, inhibitor taking some damage. And it looks like the inhibitor turret will get taken in top. Arrow fairly safe for the moment anyway. And there's another inhibitor. KT. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Several ultimate popped. Arrow on the run with that whimsy. They get the knockup onto Nagne. Juve. Oh, there they go in the back lines. Arrow gets a kill right away. And this Kog'Maw is much safer. Hey, what do you know? Look, when you have the Kog'Maw protected, he can get double kills. <laughs> That's such a novel idea. Somebody didn't even have to use Wild Growth either. No. They're really far ahead. All right, great. here we go. Now we're finally done. I think so. I think so. Ace doing a bit of damage to Nagne. Looks like uh, Fixer's going to go in onto Fury for the moment. But there goes Nexus turret number one. Nexus turret number two getting ever lower. There it goes. And so that is going to be it. Nexus goes down and KT at 32 minutes. Still a fast game. <laughs> Very sloppy in the end, but they managed to get a win against Samsung with the Juggermon. Uh, I think I'm not. I can't decide if Casey didn't know what to do or whether they were just being lazy. But it was yeah. really a after such a good early game and great skirmishing, great objective control. They knew their limits. Pushed. They had a great dive uh, in between tier one and tier two in mid lane to grab two turrets at the same time. They really did well. And then after that, after they got this Titanic lead, they. Just randomly wandered around the map. Yep. And didn't execute very good win conditions, but they did.